today, uh, International Day for Mumma Language, where people all over the world are big up for them heart language. So today, Jamaica Language Unit, we are keep up one talk show about the topic. So, I don't expect everybody to talk in a Jamaican, but since I'm international and mother language, I figure at least we should have start off in a female mumma language. Not true. All right. So, we have some people here are going to talk where well qualified to deal with the topic. We are looking about the value of female language for the cultural industries, for the creative industries. All of the industries that we have to do with the arts, we have to do with where we feel about ourselves, how we think about ourselves and how we turn where we think in a play and poem and film and all them kind of different, different things. So now, we are going to start off with Professor Hubert Devonish. Everybody knows, say, he might be a big man about here. He might be one way, get the idea to set up the Jamaica language unit. And he's been carrying the fight for the language for one long, long time. I'm a professor emeritus. That meaning do good, 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 and then give big, big merit, meritorious name, merit, meritorious name. It is emeritus, professor emeritus of the University of the West Indies, and is an honorary research fellow in the Department of Language, Linguistics, and Philosophy. And he served as coordinator of the Jamaica Language Unit for most of its twenty years of existence. So. That is a serious thing. Have the idea and them carry it. It's not easy to carry them the idea in a few university. We got plenty of time to get no fight. But you have to have the spirit. You have to believe in what you do and go through. And at that Professor Devonish do. So he's known. He's known as a public intellectual, particularly because of his advocacy for the language. He write one book a long, long time called Language and liberation. Now say the Prof Devonish. Yeah, man, that's right. Creole, and yeah. and yeah. from from them the time, in a show we say we have to liberate the language if we want to liberate yourself. So all right, Prof Devonish, go in it. All right. Um well, we don't know well mega talking me mama language, the guy in East Cruise is, right? And yeah, I hope everybody understands what I say, right? All right, good. <laughs> Um, since I'm over language, I'm not try with the Jamaican thing. I'm eating this. We are not try with. Yeah. I'm going to talk about one thing them, them call data, right? Because uh, every time you talk, you um, them record you like this song, or you write email, or you do WhatsApp, or wah, wah, wah. Them big company, they will collect the data. They will collect everything where you are set, and um, all the idea them, and so on and so forth. And them, uh, build up one thing and call one big database, right? Mm. And um, right now, um, what I'm going to do now is the my one thing them call a large language model. What a large language model? Them suck up everything from the internet, all them different things we are do, and we think we are communicate right now, them are recorded, them are use it, right? Now them create one large language model and then train them learning machine for learn not just the thing that would end the data like um, like uh, information, like who is Aristotle and Socrates and all them kind of things, so and how much miles between Kingston and, 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 and Montego Bay, them kind of information thing. But then the machine are learn or uh, learn the language self. So if now you try, you go upon one thing them call chat GPT, that will um, chat GPT based on one la large language model um, uh, we name um, GPT-3, right? And the, them suck up everything from the internet in, 19, in 2022, I think June. Suck everything, everything, and they feed the machine and the machine learn, right? And right now, you can you can try translate um, Jamaican into English, English into Jamaican. It, 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 not, it, it not do too bad a job. It kind of knows something because it um, it knows something because them got enough Jamaican on, on the web. Now, when we try again, this Creole is me language now. Mm, it kind of it not do so good, right? Um, it kind of but it clear. It, me see said there were borrow from Jamaica a little bit for make the guy this thing work, right? But it it kind of do something. But when me try uh, for use, let me see now and try and take a locono sentence, right? Which is locono is a 
um, indigenous language in Ghana, so-called Arawa. It can't do nothing with it because then they got no data, a little bit, little bit data on the web for Locono, and so it's not able with the translation and thing. All right, now, problem. The right now, them big white people and thing, they will suck up this thing and they will make enough money, you know, because um, like it, for three one model is 40 million US dollars and them kind of thing, big money. And this big company, them, Google and, 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 and Facebook and all of them have put money in for make this translation thing work. But how it do it is that them suck up everything from the web, including anything where Jamaican right, Guyanese right, just take it up and take it over. No problem. Then people are tech we think, well, we create a we make for make money for them. Now, same time that we do that, we left now in a situation where um, we country, nah, I do too good with the language thing because the government attacked the people in the language with them, they know, and they picked them up to school and they were learning language with foreign to them and so on. But we got them tool there now with them white people build up. And we can use it. We can use it if we want, because we can use the same artificial intelligence for um, um, setting up. So we can make uh, children pick the book for them read. Because when we had bilingual education project, problem was when we use human beings to translate, only one, two, three, four book you can translate. But pick me, we we'll read one book in one hour and the match you with the next book there. So it, it, it doesn't make sense for God literacy, you know, God material. The new technologies them are give the chance for make all kind of story book and thing in Jamaican or Creolese or any language. But, but you have to know if what to do though. You have to, you got for um the, the government thing they call tuning the model. You got for um create special material, build special material for train the model for do what you want it to do, and then you got for what they call prompt it for do what you want it to do. But it can do it. Problem though. Um, while all of that are gone, then the people that make money off of we. And the question we got to ask ourselves is whether the government, um, the commercial one, them like chat G, uh, GPT um, and so on, them will make money, them tie up with Microsoft and whoever else and so on. But the government next one named Boom, well, people like we make the large language model, them pull together them little two penny, two penny, two penny, and they build one open source, real, the chat GPT thing, them claim say open source and open to everybody, but I like that, right? So, but then build one open source, uh, one called Boom. And we can sit down and say, all right, now, we want to put in, we material, we now put in the material for them, train them material for, make money, like the, the chat GPT thing. But we can own, we own a material, uh, put it in, just for training it for do what we want it to do and not for make it land up in a damn database for make money off of it. And that's uh, uh, what happened with the boom one, the, the, the one named boom, right? And it built for people like we third world people, poor sufferer in people like we want to land up in the, in the big man story that would make money and get rip off and so. So we got to sit on a study now. What are we going to put together now? What are we going to put together now for make this thing happen, right? Um, we got to go and beg Carden for she material, beg this one, that one, see if the government will give you Miss Lou material. We got to beg wrong. But when we beg wrong and we create the, the, the tuning material, we got to say, look, we're using this for national development for, for we business, our we business, right? We not show it out there for, for people to commercialize and make money and so on and so forth because are we creativity, are we make it up? A we language, a we material, and we have a plan for organize now for use the resources them, whatever, about, right? For so, building... so, mm -hmm. so Prof yeah. Devonish, all that are got tie in with the cultural and the creative industries now. How right. we ever use the, the, the boom and the, the, the other yeah, um, right we, good we develop the but the, but the but, but, but uh, what, what me I said now is we now had the volume of material for the picking them land in school yet. We now had enough text school we're talking more about like storybook when you when when we walk around now and teach everybody in the Jamaica for um for real right Jamaica. How much book we got for them read? You got the Bible, you got one, two, one, two little thing, the little thing you write. But when you got one, no, 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 no. Well, like this me like a one, two, one, two thing when we write. Oh, I'm not, 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 not
I over several on listen, I've I've 10 years over say five years my right observer. Uh-huh. And now I got 13 years with Gleaner. So that uh-huh. is quick and that's a whole leap of something with my right. Yeah, anyhow, but, anyhow. But I mean somebody, I say it's enough. I mean I say it's enough, but in right, one right. little one thing, one thing. Yeah, but we got to get material all kind of different level. We're not gonna yeah. write us to do that, you know. Yeah. So what we got to do is um once we get with self organized. We can we can say well, all right now we want uh, one story about uh, pick the one goat and you know thing 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 and you get one story you handy pick the story now right we don't have to wait for specialist uh, writers for comments on because we got to get the thing now me not say the people them were all right no for right but me say right now you once government say put Jamaican language in school how much book we got for the pick them read after we teach them for you now right nothing right and so we got to get that now. And so what Mia says, we got to use the language models, the, the, the technology, the artificial intelligence for create stuff for it. Even the, the, the artists and the songwriters, them start using it already anyway, right? People are, are, are putting together and make song and make lyrics and things, using it. Well, we got to get ourselves together for All song. Right. So, yes. right? so yes, so the technology you now, I use for a language and that a language and the technology can help you create the things um, where we need to develop our culture. Right, and the All creative, right. right. Okay. All right. Go. Okay, yeah, let me hear now from Dr. Nikisha, Dr. Dawes Dawkins. She's a linguistics lecturer in the Department of Language, Linguistics and Literature at the University of West the Cape Hill campus. And she was at Mona first for eight years. And also she was a linguistics lecturer at Sam Sharp Teachers College for two years. And she, for her research, I deal with gender identity, style, how that account for how the Jamaican dance artists them sound when they perform. All right. So make we hear from you now, Dr. Dawkins. All right. Well, go on, everybody. Well, now that me here, so we have to go chat in a part for me. No, 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 me never say, oh, no, I think <laughs> people know one, too. This is not a compulsory thing. I know school you know, and I teach you. All right. So, so me can food speech and all of them something. Yeah, yeah. All right. Do what you want to do. No problem. So, I'm going to take a slightly different role from Professor Devanish while also yeah. adding to what he contributed just now. Yeah. When we think about with language, a lot of we we share my it, a few tongue, a few sound. Carolina, the noise in our blood. We yeah, can't yeah. ignore That's it. a big read, man. I know me that me have a big yeah, up. But me, I, I came is. to know about it through you, your yes. book. Yeah, yes. but here, here where Vic Reed said, the key she to be a grill, tell him, say, you have to have no fear. That is a problem. Mm-hmm. You can't fear yes. when yes. knowledge, when a knowledge comes to yes. you, like a noise in the blood or an echo yes. in the bone, you know, so yes. the idea of the knowledge in your system, in your yes. culture, we are passed on in your DNA. Yes. So and you pass it on Vic Reed. To, in a, yes. Respect, respect. But we have to honor him, you know, we have to give him the honor, give him the credit. Yes. Yes. All right. So, one of the things them women notice Jamaicans, as Jamaicans, we shame our own language. Mm-hmm. Right? And Jamaican part have enough enough status. We little, but we talawa. May I go bring you back to 2015 when Barack Obama came to Jamaica in his speech at the University of the West Indies. He opened the speech with um big up massive, greetings massive. Wagwan Jamaica, big up you. He didn't come using the language of the colonial elite. He could have used English. He could have used American standard English to greet us. But when he crossed over using this linguistic identity, this act of identity by crossing over into the Jamaican language, he established, sorry there, something I'll go on with my camera, you know, <laughs> sorry. He established some sort of common, common bond, cultural bond with the people of Jamaica because the wall are in the auditorium over you will lift up. People start clap, people start laugh, them feel good. Kawa, Barack Obama, Chad Patwa. We share my and the then sitting president of the United States come in a Jamaican youth patwa and greet we. And someone will shame for greet people in a patwa. A language is a unique part of the culture of a people. And in order for us to, to preserve the language or see it as any value. We have to keep creating and recreating things in the language. And this is why I am a, um, 
uh, when it comes to Jamaican dancehall music, I am a big supporter of Jamaican dancehall music because the music has gone far and wide. Mm -hmm. And we see through acculturation, other people embracing our language, making songs in our language, collecting awards in our language by when they use songs in our language, right? Um, and we as a people, we need to create technology in it. Prof brought about chat GPT. Chat GPT is the biggest thing now. Everybody talking about it. I would like our technology companies to jump on board with it, right? Digicel is one of the biggest communication providers uh, in Jamaica and the Caribbean. Correct me if I'm wrong. They have this feature, this help feature on the phone called um, Ruby, right? When I communicate with Ruby, I use English because, you know, we type in English and we select um, the, the issues that we're having in English. As Prof is saying, chat GPT is, you know, grabbing up our language and all these things. Like Siri for the iPhone, me wants a Ruby do. Fee, um, our phones in the Caribbean, what Siri is doing for the cell phones in America, right? We supposed to can put commands in Jamaican Creole in our mother tongue, the first language. It shouldn't just be that it's for the elite or persons who just have a good grasp of English. Can we say, yo, Ruby, me that like for go downtown, but more on the fastest route for reach downtown from Portmore, <laughs> right? Just as an example, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, ask other questions, you know, some of me, um, me get one cell phone, be like, it not look right or whatever, you know, all the problems that Ruby can solve. And we can use part one, make these commands using Ruby. Right. So we should team up, you know, there's a Jamaican language unit and find ways in which we can help create new forms of technology with the language or recreate those that already exist to give access to persons who are not um, speakers of English. I don't know what's going on with my connection, who are not speakers of English. Right. Um, that is just another component. When we see value in our language, we are preserving some form of identity. A language is a unique part of the culture of our people. It's a part of our identity. It's who we are as Jamaicans. And I want Jamaicans to really embrace it, right? Um, another point that I wanted to make, there is this movie, and I'm going with the popular things that's going on in the world right now, you know, Top Boy, a Netflix movie, right? I'm seeing something that I've never seen before, which is Jamaican Creole in subtitles in a, a, a big movie on Netflix, right? And I'm hearing authentic Jamaican Creole. I'm a phonetician and a phonologist, so you know, I, I specialize in the science of song. So may I hear Jamaican Creole phonology, even if them write Chaka Chaka Patwa for the subtitle. It is the speech that is authentic, right? And I'm seeing where producers are now not ashamed. They're not trans, the subtitles are not in English. When the Jamaican characters are speaking, the subtitles are in Jamaican, right? And that's something that we should value and we should see more people creating scripts that has in, um, that has the mother tongue in the script. Um, or as Joseph might say, mother language, because I know just the oral language we have in Jamaican, you have country sign, we have people who are deaf who use Jamaican sign language. So we can't leave out <laughs> those who sign. Um, so it's really the value of the Jamaican language to the culture and creative industry. I want to see more people creating in a few language, in a few tongue. Caroline, we know you're right. Wolipa, wolipa article. <laughs> <laughs> me not say that is enough, no, you know, because I, because I want to make sure we have enough, 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 my rights. Yes. So we want to see more um, literary creations, more mm. films. The, we're not even to talk about the music, because the music already had its job in terms of mm -hmm. Ed Sheeran. Aisha and a cover him song, The Shape of You. We know it's a, it's a very raunchy cover. Mm -hmm. And the man love it, he embrace it. There's a video of him talking about it. Boops. Him go collaborate with Aisha and Ed Sheeran and I sing in a patwa. Girl, me want to come brace it, brace it, pan yo. Pat Jamaican Creole for knowledge, Jamaican Creole syntax. So it's almost like there's this renewed status of the language. What was usually what we call a minority language or a language that we shame International artists are now trying to imitate our tongue because it's cool. 
right? And usually acculturation happens when you have assimilation to the dominant culture. We are not the dominant culture, but guess what? We look about with Talawa. In terms of our size, we're not the dominant culture, but we're seeing now the language has this st status that other people want a piece of, other people are creating songs in, right? And a lot of them, they're benefiting from it. So I want Jamaicans to embrace it and try to also benefit from it. Last point for this part, may I, may I not talk too long, but anyway. No, man, go on to, go on to. Muma Nancy cover the, I think it's the Toots and Metal songs, um, Bam Bam. For 34 years, she said she was not getting anything, no royalties. But in 2014, when Reebok, can you imagine Reebok decided to use the woman song in our commercial? Big exposure for Nancy, no, but she never get no credit. So she sued them and she start get little money. She said she never did get no credit or any benefits, nothing from it. And I'm talking about monetary value now, <laughs> right? Absolutely. She wasn't getting anything from it. And as soon as she sued, sued Reebok and they got onto it, our voice, her voice in Jamaica and Patois sing bam bam what a bam bam, right? She started to make some monetary um gains from her song that she was losing credits over for years. And it's it's still going on. You still have Jamaicans collaborating with overseas artists. I'm not going to call some of the names, and their names are not in the credits as an artist. So we need, and, and it's the language we're using our own identity to collaborate with these artists. We need to make sure that it is out there. It is in print, right? So the Bible translation, that's an awesome work where we have the largest body of work preserved in the Jamaican language, right? And there are several others. Thanks to um, Professor Hubert Devonish, the Bible Society of the West Indies and Wycliffe Bible Translators. That is one of the most awesome pieces of literature that we have that helps mm -hmm. in the preservation of our language. Seriously. And I'm just going to stop there because we have other speakers. Excellent. No, man, I admire your passion. I know what you talk about. I am a serious, serious point. One of my friends um, was a manager. Um, and I was doing a tour in a Japan and they were preparing for a show and some poor people could pick them run up and down the stage and they're trying to get rid of them and nobody not taking him on. And a Japanese elder just went on stage and said, a fool for picking them here. <laughs> and in two twos, they picked them clear off the stage, you know, because Japanese yes. into Jamaican culture, into reggae, they have learned the language. Once yes. you recognize that the language is the identity of the people. If you really want to identify with the people, then we have to learn the language, you know? Yes, yes. All right, enough thanks for that. So now yeah, man, bless up. we're going to move to Dr. Velma Pollard. Um, she is um, a retired senior lecturer, but she, not, she retired like me because she still had enough things. She worked in the School of Education at the University of the West Indies. In fact, she was the Dean of the Faculty of Education at one point. Her expertise is in linguistics and language education. And her book, From Jamaican Creole to English, is still an invaluable resource for Jamaican teachers. We always like them word like invaluable, which really mean valuable, but then put that in on it, which sound like it's not valuable. You see how English peculiar? Anyhow, it's a valuable resource for Jamaican teachers. And she's known for her pioneering work on the language of Rastafari. Her book, Dread Talk, Sell Off It, Sell Off, and Reprint, and Reprint, and Reprint. She has also had a very successful career as a creative writer, especially in the genre of poetry, but she has also written fiction. And she has won the Casa de las Americas Prize for one of her novels. So, um, Dr. Dev Dr. Devonish, Dr. Pollard, I'm reading from a list that has Dr. Devonish's name below here. So, sorry. Dr. Pollard, go in at me there. Miss Miss um, Cooper, thank you very much. But I'm not going to be able to go into it like all these other people do. I don't have that kind of passion. No, man, you can't go into it in your I way. The, I got the question. Um, you have to adjust your, 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 your camera because half of your... your, your all right, tell me when you can see me. I only see peace. All right, that's it. Stay there so I can see all of your beautiful okay, face and dress. Can you still hear me? Yes. All right. So I just wrote down a little thing, and then after that, maybe I, I'd leave. And I, I, I wrote down here my response to the question or to the topic. 
the value of the Jamaican language to cultural and creative industries. Yes. Now, I don't too know anything about those public big things out there, cultural and creative. But I did say, and you took the word from me already, I have written down here that the Jamaican language is invaluable to these industries. And you have already explained that invaluable means very valuable. So I don't <laughs> But I wrote it there with a, a in bold, right? Oh yeah, say that in the thing. Yes, yeah, say it, say it your what way. I have written on my first sentence is that the Jamaican language is invaluable to these industries, and I'm saying you already pick out the word out of my, out of our mutual head and run with it. So it's fine. You have, you have already emphasized that in does not mean in. Right? <laughs> Repetition deep was impression. <laughs> All right. All right. So. So the Jamaican language is invaluable to these industries. In fact, it is the language, it is the language of the countries that everybody has said already. There would be no character, no flavor to those industries if they functioned in Jamaican English or entirely in Jamaican English. Our cultural grandparents are African. Velma, can I just stop you there? And I know you have your text, but explain that some people think that Jamaican English is part of, you know, they don't realize the difference between Jamaican English and, and, and our Jamaican language. Oh, that's what you want me to, you want me to explain that? Just oh, yeah, yeah. All right, we have two languages, Jamaican Standard English and Jamaican Creole, but our mother tongue is Jamaican Creole, Patois, whatever. Yeah. So I think that's pretty clear to most people. No, uh, what, what, the, con the confusion is because the two languages have the same words, some people speaking Jamaican Patwa say a English may talk. Yes. That's the point you want to make that because we have yes. the same our our word bank has the same origin. Yes. The words function in completely different ways, however, they have different functions, but that's a whole yeah, and you see, we, the people need to understand we have Jamaican English, like how we have American English, we have Australian English and so on. So we have our English here, but it's separate from our mother tongue. Go on, Miss Velma. Sorry to cut you, but I wanted to make that point. Well, you can cut me anywhere and, and just put in what you know to put in. Uh, our cultural grandparents are Africa and Europe with Asia thrown in. Much stirring has gone has gone in while the pot has simmered on a Jamaican fire. The mother tongue expresses all of this. You may say that when the music goes abroad, for example, the audiences do not understand the language. True, they may not understand every word, but the tones and the body language accompanying them are all part of the language, and the outsider listener appreciates that. In fact, I've heard Musa Baruka say that he has not spoken or played for any audience outside of Jamaica and got the feeling that people don't understand. They understand. So it's not about not using our language because people won't understand it. That, that is an old hat comment that we shouldn't hear anymore now. When, when Patchin famous music producer of Chinese and Indian ancestry, talks about the move from Jamaica to the US in the 70s. She said she simply moved the Jamaican culture to another location without missing a beat. And it has flourished, not only, it's not only Jamaicans who buy that stuff, it has flourished. It has flourished as much as it was flourishing when it was located here. You know? So, Music and lyrics go together to make a product we appreciate locally and send abroad. I am sure we are not here to defend a position, but to clarify a few points. Now, my, I, I, the, the, the question of being ashamed of Patwa, I really am not sure that that is accurate now. I, I'm, I'm, I, I doubt that one can say that we are ashamed of Patwa anymore. No, or if anybody's ashamed of it, I, I think they would be ashamed to say they're ashamed of it. The way things have gone so far. Can I just stop I, in here, Velma, again? Because if you read the comments that people post in response to my columns, 
written in Jamaican. You will see the shame and the contempt. You understand? Why glean a waste in space and this? You understand? So there's still Pardon. that shame and contempt. Would, would, you, would you allow me to say that, that those people who are answering, who are writing back to you, are no more than maybe a little of 10%? Okay, let's reach right. up to 30. All right. I mean, those are the people who will read the newspaper and write back to you. That's a very small percentage of our community. All right. I mean, all the right. ordinary people. If ordinary people were ashamed of Jamaica, they would talk it all the time, which is what we do. Very few people now are stumbling around trying to use English in situations where they feel they wouldn't be understood if they use Jamaica. I don't believe there are people like that much anymore. Would you say All that? right. All right. Yeah, I'm saying that we can't. you can't go by the people who are writing writing you down or trying to um, talk you down. They don't know they can't do that. Or they will they will not be successful. But I'm saying that, that that's not the majority of our people. I am and I am not denigrating English or putting down English anyway. My argument is that we have to have both of them. Both of them are necessary. And this is why I'm going to allow you, you ask you to allow me to read the poem in which I say just that. Uh, but but uh, let me see if there's anything else I should say Sorry about the show business. What is that? I was apologizing for cutting you. Sorry. No, no, that's okay. You can always cut me. I don't have that much to say. I'm saying that all languages are a badge. Anywhere you go in foreign and to Jamaicans, the first thing they do is start using Jamaican. I remember. I have two sons, one of whom studied abroad and the other one here. And the one that was studied abroad would come up to him and say, what did man I say? And his brother would answer, the man not say nothing. That's a long time ago. So that is, that's maybe 50 years ago, 40 years ago. But from then, they knew that that is how well they went to JC. You can't go to JC and don't understand. You go there to learn. If you, if you if you come here from another country, as I brought them here, the first thing you have to do before you start getting bright in your class is make sure you conquer patois. And then you can even start laughing at those children who came from England and can't speak it. You know? So I'm, I'm, I'm saying that for me, the ideal Jamaican is the bilingual Jamaican. I am not asking anybody to go and say, our language is Jamaican, and you better deal with that. I'm saying I can't afford that attitude because I know what's happening to some young people in some foreign countries who are holding on to that and refusing to use the language of the place they have gone to, not realizing that at those points, they're minority and they're required to speak. So I think that what we should try and make sure is that they have both languages here, and we operate both of them. Those people who were writing back to Carolyn will continue to use their English, but guess what? They all understand Pato, and they all know where to use it. Language and situation is what we're talking about. Those same people are not going to be using necessarily English in the market because a lot of funny things will happen. I've had some experiences with it, the business of the English in the market there. And, and um, they know that it doesn't work, you know? So I just want to read this short poem, which, which I, I think is the ideal for me of language for a person coming out of school in Jamaica. I think you're not supposed to go to school and come out without being able to handle both languages. However, we have to do that in the schools. I don't know, that's a whole different story. But I think it is our duty and education, a broad education is, is my interest, has been my interest all along. You should be able, A, first thing, you should be able to see the difference between the two languages and B, you should be able to, well, first you speak both of them and because you know how different they are, you know, and you know where to use which one where. I mean, some people are really quite awful with the distinctions that used to be made. I have been in the bank and heard uh, a person say he wanted to um, want put some money in the bank or something. And the lady says, you mean you want to deposit or whatever? And when she turned around to ask her friend to buy her lunch, 
she was telling the friend in Pato what to buy for her, but she was pushing English at the poor little man in front of her in order to make him feel that something, and I'm not sure that that would happen today, but I've seen it happen. So if that, if that is, if you use the word shame in that, that is somebody trying to make somebody else ashamed where the man would not have gone in there with any complex. So we, we don't need to do that. And I really think that the number of people who want to do that has, re, has been reduced considerably because of a lot of what has been going on in the society. So let me just read this one poem here. She told you that one of the things I do is write poetry. So I think I can be allowed. Absolutely. Adam? Absolutely. It will be a joy to hear your poem. It's called Cot Language, and it's dedicated to my grandson, Stephen, who's no longer a child. Wrapping your tongue round words, Stephen, maneuvering spinsters and bachelors. How many learn to spell, but never practice words? My grandson, you will be words, man, claiming this English language, other people's anguish, claiming our patois. Switching easy when reason calls. I saw the lightning leaping through the house. I heard the thunder clap and the ball out, Jesus Christ. Children across the wall offend, and you defend with, boy, boy, no bother way. Didn't I tell them every time bilingual is the lick? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Velma. No, I had intended to have um, Professor Dr. Amina present before you, but it looked like it going in the order it's supposed to go in. So Dr. Amina, let me just introduce you briefly. Um, um, you have been involved, Dr. Amina Blackwood Meeks has been involved in education and arts education for decades. She's a founder of the Nancy Storytelling Festival and is currently college orator at the Edna Mandy College of Visual and Performing Arts. She's an accomplished writer and storyteller and was recently given a national award for her work in the culture. All right, Amina, same thing going at it. It is just fascinating for me to listen to this conversation and hear words like shame and embarrassed when it relates to the, to the language. I grew up in a bilingual community. My mother and my father come from the country deep rural Manchester, in the case of my father, and deep rural St. Andrew, in the case of my father. Mother. My, my mother, thank you. And I was born and raised at 233 and a half Spanish Town Road, not far from the Butter Shoe Store, if any of you know where that is. But across the road from me was my godfather, who had a little school. In those days, it was called private school. Nowadays, when it's a private school, it means that you have money and you get private tutelage. In those days, it means eh, the person who know a little more than everybody else open a private school on them veranda <laughs> and everybody pay a shilling and come learn to read and write. Before I could walk every morning, my godfather came across the road, dressed me up and collect me and put me on his desk while he taught. So me hear how my god, godfather talk. But when we go across the road to Miss Pearl and Mr. Johnny, as something else them I said, and I never knew that I was supposed to be ashamed of the way my parents spoke. That time now, we never have TV. We did have radio and we used to gather around the radio every evening and watch it. <laughs> like how we watch TV and mostly we are watch the Lou and Ronnie show. As far as my little head was concerned, everybody in the whole world talks so. Cause as so my parents talk and when them turn on the radio, at that me I hear. It was much later that I realized that not everybody did talk like that. Now from my mother and my father, my mother never finished primary school, but she was very educated because head come before book. 
And my father was a revivalist who lived in the Psalm and who had a Psalm for every living thing that he wanted to communicate with us. Much later, I learned from my parents something that big word people now call indigenous knowledge systems. What you know because of the way you live and interact with your environment. My mother used to make up some word that I never knew it was make up word. And I'm going to give you an example, but <laughs> I loved it. And from my mother who never finished primary school, me learning love of the Jamaican language. So what is one of those stories that I tell about my mother all the time? When we look here, see, my mother does have some rule. Anybody who is your friend, she have to know them. So the whole of my primary school class didn't know which part I live. We did have a thing named Parker Ink and Parker Pen. You remember them? Yes, and me, man. Yes. And me had my Parker Pen and my Parker Ink. And one day, a big girl, we're all the same age, but some bigger than some, a big girl named Carol Bryan begged me some of my Parker Ink and me not give her. And she shot me a box. And me couldn't fight. When long after the fight gone, the box gone, the thing a bubble up in me. And one day we had play upon the playing field and Carol Bryan had enough money to have a transistor radio, what we used to call ear scanner radio, very descriptive, which part you, you, you carry the radio. And my eyes spied a stone as soon as I saw Carol Bryan's radio and I introduced the stone and the radio to one another. Well, since everybody in my class know where I live, Carol Bryan hit me up and go and tell my mother, say, me broke up our radio. Miss Pearl never want no explanation. She's going to give Carol Bryan satisfaction, which is to say she's going to beat me and make Carol Bryan say. Now, if you have ever been beaten by your parents, you know, say, you get beaten under, under instruction. Where you cry for? You get something for cry for, make her give you some more. And Miss Pearl and go on and she'll lick me and she'll say, imagine you're gone to school, gone broke up smuddy transistor, and we don't even own a trans brother. And my mother <laughs> was not joking. <laughs> but she did write a whole book of economics 101. And my mother spoke to us like that all the time. And I, I, I completely enjoyed it. So if you had talked to Miss Pearl and you only say, um, 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 Miss Pearl said, then that don't have no foot. And she wasn't joking. Now you had to find some other word for say, um. So I never knew that the way we speak was something to be ashamed of until I went to a school that taught you to um, remove your tea bags from your teacups and how to eat open-faced cucumber sandwiches. <laughs> and then you enter the realm of people really talk like this, or people really want to know how you talk like this. So a lot of the words that I use in my stories and a lot of the examples, me not make them up. Them come straight out of Miss Pearl and Miss Johnny Mouth or out of the extended families of my aunts and my, and my uncles. Now I realize what I just did. Me go from one language to the next. Uh, big head people like you and Nikisha are going to call it code switch. But it is not something which is conscious. I don't make a decision to say, okay, the only time I make that decision is when I am not in Jamaica. And I am very conscious that the people them whom I talk to might not speak Jamaican. And can I tell you, it's a stress. <laughs> It's like when you're speaking Spanish and, and you're thinking in English and translating at the same time. That freedom, that joy, that fulfillment is not there when I have to make the conscious, the conscious decision of, of how I communicate. It is true that when I go to foreign abroad and distant places to perform, if I don't speak in Jamaican, they are disappointed. 
including when I go to Mexico and I am telling my stories, I may have a Mexican translator. Them want me to put in at least two words, two sentences in a Jamaican because Velma is right. They feel it. It is communication is also a feeling. It is also an experience. Now, I know that there are people who are ashamed of the language. When children come to my storytelling festival and they bow and they are about to say, tell a story and they go, this story is about brother dog and brother puss. Velma, I know you've heard it. I know that some teacher is overcorrecting. She know that the, the nuances of the story going to get lost if she translates it completely into English, but she is teaching the child how to speak Jamaican with an acceptable accent. So the picnic come and tell you about brother dog and brother puss. And so there are many levels at which it's complex. It's almost complicated the way we relate to the language. And we know that there are still children who teach or tell them, say, you can't talk like that. The next set of examples I want to, I want to give about the duality, the hypocrisy of this thing about being ashamed of the language. Every so often state agencies ask me to run um, workshops. And I was running some workshops for parish officers who work in agriculture. I may mean, try to tell them, you know, when you call a meeting of the farmers, you have to use little wriggle and you use little proverbs and little story and little folk song and so on. And, and they are enjoying the workshop. And then somebody said to me, you know, so we love the workshop, but if this somebody who appear you to teach with this workshop, ever come to a meeting and here we are talk so we're looking for a job so there is almost a way in which at some levels in the society you need to earn the right to talk the language so that them know say you're not really full fool you're just a guan like say and carolyn you were there at the funeral service of the honorable louise bennett coverley when, when, when sections of that ceremony left me awash in shame, when people are said, oh, you know, Louise went to a good school, i.e. she know better than the foolishness where she out there chat, oh yes, that was said. Or, you know, we are so grateful to Louise who taught us to trace in Patois, as if to say that is the only thing that we can do with the language. We can trace in it, we can show us that we know better and we can perform it, but we are not allowed to say our language is deeply philosophical and conveys levels of meaning that when we try to translate or transliterate, um, we lose. So I, I will pause there for now. Yes, thank you very, very much, Amina. Um, we're still looking for Kamau Amen. I think he will be on soon, but he's, there I have, now. he's, he's here. I'm, I'm, seen. Here's, I'm oh, here. Welcome, Kamo. Welcome, welcome. Um, How are you? Good, good. Kamo is a graduate of the University of the West Indies. In fact, he's a first graduate, if I'm not wrong, in the degree program in cultural studies put out by the Institute of Caribbean Studies. Isn't that true, Kamo? You're the first graduate in that program? I'm, yes, I'm the first in film yes, first, for the cultural studies. Yes, in cultural studies, absolutely. Yes. And he, he's an expert on the business on culture. In fact, he was the person who developed the program in entertainment and cultural enterprise management that is offered by the Reggae Studies Unit within the Institute of Caribbean Studies. And for uh, many years, Kamo has been involved in institution building. For example, he was part of the process of developing the national cultural policy 
So Kamau is really well positioned to talk about the cultural and creative industries. And I had wanted to start with you, Kamau, so that you could explain more fully what we mean by cultural and creative industries. So if you would like to start with that and then give your insights into how we can use Piwi language to make the cultural and creative industries work better. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction, Prof. Uh, so I, I listened into the, the earlier uh, uh, presentations by the, the other panelists. And my approach, I think, will be just to speak about the cultural and creative industries and uh, really just to throw out some ideas with respect to where I think we should go. Um, the fact that you mentioned that the entertainment and cultural enterprise management program was something I developed back in the day. Um, I want to center that as part of my presentation in that when, when I speak of the use of the language and to speak to the question of the value of the language for the cultural and creative industries, I want to be specific in saying that I'm speaking of the economic value, right? Um, you know, we, we, we could speak of value in other terms, but strictly in speaking, basically money. How, 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 how can we make money from the, 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 the Jamaican language? And uh, when, when we talk about the cultural and creative industries, we're talking about a number of different uh, economic sectors, right? Um, in the economy, you can think music is one, which, which we all know. Uh, then you can think about events. You can think about festivals, right? Um, you think about the TV, you think about radio, uh, you think about theme parks when you, when, 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 you know, when you, when you, you go and, and get a ride um, at, uh, you know, um, a, 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 a theme park. Um, I want to, to I, I'm forgetting the, the, um, the theme park in Ocherius, um but essentially, you, you know, you, 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 you talk also of the visual and the performing arts. Um, you, you, you have a wide range of film. Um, you, you, you can go into gaming. You're talking about toys and games. We're talking about literature, books, publishing, right? All of these are areas in which we can use the Jamaican language. And we do use the Jamaican language as a part of the involvement and work within these economic sectors. Um, the, the, one of the issues we, we have is that because we have not really officially recognized the Jamaican language as a people, so we all speak it, we know. I mean, as, as Dr. Um, Pollard says, who, even the people who oppose you, Prof, uh, know and speak the, 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 the Jamaican Creole, right? So, mm -hmm. so, so the fact is we, 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 we speak it, but we have not done what we need to offer this um, in, in, in schools so that people understand its structure, so that people can be able to write it. Now, thankfully, for the work that the Jamaica Language Unit is doing, right? I mean, a lot more of, of, of the standardization is happening so that hopefully eventually more and more Jamaicans will be able to not only speak it, but read it and write it. And, and if you're talking about making money, part of that process has got to be the ability to read, right? And to write, to write down so we can talk the words and we can cuss and we can trace and we can do all the things in Jamaican. Right, but the fact of the matter is, many of us or most of us cannot write it. Right, we have problems in putting it down on paper. And if you're talking about the longevity, right, the ability to commercialize, if you're writing a you 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 you're writing a movie, right, you're writing a radio script, whatever you're doing, the ability for that to 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 travel, 
into other markets, into other spaces, is the ability to put it down on paper in some way, shape, or form, right? And what we have to do is to recognize that, well, this is something that is valuable and needs to be given that official recognition, right? And with that official recognition, the ability to commercialize it improves, right? So for example, we, we've, we have had, Prof, you, you and I know, I mean, there are people who are coming from Japan, who are coming from, you know, there are people in Africa, other parts of the world who want to learn Jamaican Creole. You go to the reggae festivals in Europe, the, the fact that the moment they know you're Jamaican, they want you to tell them something Jamaican, right? Speak to them in Jamaican. And the, 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 the fact that we do not even have the, you know, the, the courses, for example, um, we, we, we don't have modes where we can deliver this in mass, en masse, to a number of different people, at, you know, and, 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 and charge them literally charge them for these services is something that we're losing out on. So, 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 so in, 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 in creating, in recognizing it, we then create the ability to commercialize it. I mean, one of the things, uh, you know, we, we, I've, I've, I've done is I've acted as, for example, a translator. I'm coming to you now from the United States. I, I, I just came out of a meeting and, and, and joined this. But I've, I've worked as a translator in, in, in court cases, right? No, 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 there are these entities in the US who have Jamaican clients who need translators for their court cases. No, there are not many people who are formally trained in this. I have not been formally trained in this. The, the, the fact that, that, you know, that I'm a Jamaican is what qualified me, and perhaps because I'm, I'm university educated, qualified me to do this job. Now, I'm saying that there are more opportunities even for something as simple as this. I've worked at, at doing subtitles in movies, in documentaries, right? Again, I'm not formally trained in any of this, but, 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 but I was paid to do these things. And, 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 and of course, the the, 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 the fact that, you know, the, there's, there's an example of um, BBC Pigeon that came up um, some years ago, which, which, which is, a, is a Creole station, essentially. I, I shouldn't use Creole again with Pigeon, but, 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 but just to say that it's, it's a station that, that BBC offers across the African, West African continent that 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 broadcast entirely in their version of creole uh, you know they you, you you know they the bbc sees an opportunity for offering this to an audience to which they're selling ad, ad, advertisements they're creating content right and and this this has created an, a whole economic activity again we don't have we 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 have missed out on that, or we are missing out on an opportunity to create something similar for an audience that we know, for example, reggae being worldwide, uh, would, you know, there are, there are various bits of content that we could package and offer to various markets, right? Which would include teaching of, you know, uh, teaching people the language. Uh, so, so, so these, there, there are practical examples that can be given as to ways we can make money using the Jamaican language if we choose to actually acknowledge it, put systems in place to, to give people, to give Jamaicans in particular, because Jamaicans first, the tools through which that, you know, they, they can now go out in the world and earn economically, make money from the use of the Jamaican language. So, 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 so that is, 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 is perhaps what I want to put out there um, as my initial comments and as the conversation goes on, I would, you know, I'd, I'd offer other, other um, pointers, but, but I hope that that sets the tone in terms of um, 
what what I what I mean when or at least what I'm thinking about when we speak about the value of the cultural and creative industries in the context of of of, of the Jamaican language. Thanks very much, Tamo. I would agree that literacy in the language is very important, but we also must remember that the recording industry, you know, the record, the whole business of recording sound has enabled um, oral discourse to be spread very wide as a complement to the written, you know? So we must, you know, that's something- No, that no disagreement, no disagreement. I think, you know, they all, they, they coexist. Complement, and, yes. And, and, yeah, they, 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 each, each has its role. Yes, and so, um, you know, it doesn't take away from that, that concern. Yes. All right. At this point, I would like to ask if any of the panelists would like to ask a question to another panelist or respond to something that was said. We don't have any questions or comments in the chat as yet. Seems as though the people who are on agree with us and don't have anything contentious that they want to say or even anything complimentary. I'm not impressed that nobody's taking us on in the chat. But um, anybody, Prof Devonish, do you want to say anything in response to anything that has been said or you want to make any additional comments? No, not right now, I, I'm listening, thanks. All right, okay. What about you, um, Velma, anything you want to say? No myself with what Kamau just said. First, I didn't know where he was. I've lost touch, lost, you know, I just know, I, if you said you're in Alaska, I would believe. If you said you're in Australia, I would believe. I just haven't seen you in maybe 10, 15 years. You don't even remember that you know me. But anyway, I want to associate myself with the need that he is filling wherever he is. The whole business of Jamaicans and the court, you know, some of the stories are murderous yes. when they don't have people like him. And there is really good work for people and I really, I know it's good if you are trained, but I feel that using even people who are not trained, as long as they master both languages, it, it's better to have an untrained person who's mastered both languages doing it than not to have anybody at all. Absolutely. Because our people are at a serious disadvantage. And the thing is that just because the, 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 the words of the two languages are the same, I mean, to me, the fact that the functions are so totally different. I mean, if you, just any little bit of analysis that you do shows you just the fact of how many functions the letter A operate in Jamaican Creole. A is only an article, A or an in English. But there's about four or so, five, I think six functions in Jamaican Creole. And that to me is a very, very big difference. So to be in court using a language that has five or let's say five responses to one sound and use it with people who have one response to that sound. To me, it, it, it's, it's a murderous gulf. And so I just want to say thank you for what you're doing. And I know it to be a great need in many places. Well, Velma, I agree with you that it is very important for the work that Kamau is doing in foreign. But to me, the tragedy is that in Jamaica, the legal system, the court system is not taking the Jamaican language seriously, not at the level. I mean, I was in court a few years ago defending myself in a case where I couldn't get any lawyer to take on the case because it's a kind of can't just go to court and talk, which turned out to be quite true. But as I sat in the court and I saw the judge operating, it hurt me to my heart. You know, at one point, there was a man who had come to court and he was the defendant. The person who sued him didn't come to court and the judge threw out the case. But she threw it out in such a way that the man did not know that the case had been thrown out and the man is sitting there, sitting there, sitting there. Since I had already been in contention with her on other matters, I jumped up and said, Your Honor, why don't you tell the man that he's free to go? You know what you said? I have dismissed the case, and if he wants to sit there, he can stay there. So I turned to the man, and I said, Bossy, the man who sue you not come court, so you get away. And in one flash, the man was out of the courthouse. And the judge seemed to have felt 
absolutely no need to tell the man in a way that he would understand. Another time I was, because my little case drag on and on and on and on. Another time I'm there with her. And there's a woman now that she's trying to get to do mediation because them said, woman, oh, oh money. And the woman said, she don't owe, the money, owe any money. And the woman kept on saying, me no own her money. And she said, if they go to mediation. So I said, your honor, can I please explain to the woman? So I said to the lady, they're going to try and get you and whoever said them, you owe them the money. So talk to somebody and then they're going to talk it out and decide which one I own the right. You agree to that? She said, yes. You know what the judge said? Is that what I should have said? I said, well, yes. If you wanted the woman to understand, that is what you should have said. You know, and that same judge almost threw me out of the court. Not because my fast in our business, but because I came in pants that were not down to my ankle. I had on culottes that were mid-calf and there I am thinking that I'm very crisp dressed for court. And she told me promptly that I was not dressed properly and that I should leave. So it's, as I'm leaving now in great vexation of spirit, one of the police women said to me, just tell her I say you're sorry. And I said, what do you mean? Just, just tell her I say you're sorry, man. Because I had no plan. I had on a long top and I had planned to go outside, pull the waist of the pants to see if I could get it down to my ankle. But then I'd be running a risk that maybe the pants would have dropped off because it was not secured and it's dead. I would have been in contempt of court. So when I went to must go back and apologize, I just went back and apologized profusely and she allowed me to stay. And I am saying no, I wrote a newspaper column about it where I said, imagine she is more concerned about the length of my pants, which she says must meet down to my ankle, than she is about being understood by the people in her court. You know, and this is to me, this is a, the, the questions of power in Jamaica around language, because she is a judge. She is not to condescend to speak a language that the people them in the court understand. Go ahead, Velma. To me, the real tragedy about that is that the judge know Patrick. Exactly. That is and that point. when she's playing domino or bridge with her friends, she's likely to be playing Patrick. I mean, I found out it at a very early age. Carlin does not agree with me that English was spoken in the house where I was brought up. But I'm not going to con I don't, I'm not going to get into a con contradiction with Carolyn about how I know I was brought up. But I will say that. Why are you calling my name? Just tell your story. Oh, because you're always telling me that my parents were part of it. And I don't know what to do about you or no. Before Jeez, you were okay. born. But how anyway, could I tell you anyway, that? How could I tell you that and I wasn't there? That's what I've asked you. Anyway, the fact is... No, I'm saying I found out at a very early age that when they were playing bridge or whatever, all of them, and there, there were headmasters who were their friends from all over the parish, they would all be play, talking about the cards and so in Patwa. And that was because I used to sit up and listen to people. I, and even, I, I gave this example somewhere where I turned up at a dance. Well, I shouldn't be there, but I keep repeating my parents that they should not have left me at the younger ones. I, I took them all up to the dance. Anyway, there was the principal of the school who speaks English all the time, dancing and saying, I won't call his name. Let us say his name is Brown, which it was a teacher. Now, this man, I had never heard him speak that that way. He's the principal of the school. But that taught me something that, you know, but again, it is about language and situation. But what I hate is the fraudulence of the judge because she Absolutely. can do better. And I don't think we need to punish her. You, do you know where they punish people like that, though? I don't know if it is now, but I know about 30 years ago, I had to have surgery. And in the post-surgery thing, we had to operate with the, you know, the, the, the important nurses who supervise the, the meal and stuff. And, you know, like a lady said, a little more piece, I, I want a little more piece of the pork one. Uh, uh, it's a piece of forky watch. It's an old piece of forky watch. So I always say one of the places you must use English is in the hospital. But I, I, I'm saying that's 30 years ago. But I really <laughs> resent our people who know the two languages using it to, um, to oppress. And I'm, I'm very sorry that you have that experience. 
thing because I was trying to hope that it was not like that anymore. You know? No, Velma, and it's even talking about the hospital. I have a situation right now where I'm helping one of my relatives manage the illness of her son. And when you ask her what the doctor says, she cannot give you a clear explanation. So I got so frustrated, I called one of the doctors and I must give him full marks. He spoke with us for about 20 minutes. I mean, this is not, he's not being paid. He's just out of the generosity of his spirit. He's explaining carefully to her what the situation is with the child. I was so grateful. And then he said, one of the problems is that when you, you explain the situation and the, the, the patient will say, yes, doc. Yes, doc don't mean that they understand, you know. Yes, doc just means deference to authority. So yes, doc. So this is, this is a yes, doc. And so they cannot explain what the doctor has said because they don't understand it, you know. So I said to him, but oh, you people have a responsibility, a duty to talk in Jamaican, you know the language. Why medicine is already not English. It is Greek and Latin. So you have all of these technical terms that are not basic English. And so you are now going to explain to somebody who doesn't speak Jamaican English, what is wrong with them or their child. And you're not using the language that they understand to be that, that is just immoral. You know, and so the medical industry in Jamaica, we're talking about the creative industry, the medical industry, like the legal industry, they must have to come out for their high horse and talk to people in a language that the people them understand that them know. It's not like say them don't know the language, you know. Them know it, but because them is lawyer and doctor, they cannot be seen to know the language. Because for them, the language is a sign of shame. How else can you explain their refusal to use it? They feel that they're superior to their patients and superior to their clients because they no longer speak Jamaican. And so they cannot condescend to speak that language in order to be understood. So they prefer to for the man to sit down in the courthouse, not knowing that he's free to go, you prefer the woman to stay there and say, no, me don't want to go to no mediation because me, know, me don't owe them no money. They prefer that to happen than for them to just speak in Jamaican and say to the man, sir, you're lucky the person who sue you don't come so you can go on. What would it have taken off of her to say that? So that is where the, the, the shame comes in. She's ashamed that she's a speaker of that language. Prof, if I may. Yes, please. <laughs> I, I hear the passion. But and the pain. Know, it, it, it's, yes, it, it, it's to me, the, it's a question of power. Yes. And, and, and if we are to find a solution to even, even the, 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 um, the question of value and extracting that value, it is also tied up with the issue of how do we challenge the status quo and the yes. power relationships that that currently exist within the context of of jamaica because yes. what we are asking for for example the recognition of the language which which would go a long way in 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 because that for example if the state recognized the jamaican language the judge the doctor whoever it is who sits in a position where they know they have more information than the other party yes. would be required also not to just deliver the information in English, but also deliver the information in the language that they know the Jamaican person will understand. Absolutely. Right? And so, and so what 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 I would argue in in, in terms of looking for a solution, a, 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 a solution for this is looking at the, at the people now who are in, you know, operating within the Jamaican space, who can weather through um, collaborative um, efforts or, or some other 
I mean, those who are using commerce at this point, and 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 I I often point to, you know, the the, the telecommunications companies, which um, to some extent also are part of certainly the the the, the digital and the flow. Um, all benefit from the creative industries. They're media companies, they're communication companies, right? They trade on aspects of the Jamaican culture. They use it not just in marketing, but the fact that they are channels through which the culture is expressed daily, right? They need to be brought into this discussion and through some form of pressure, and I, I, I can't say what that pressure will be right now, but through some form of pressure, they have to be used and brought in as people who are going to help this discussion along as to recognizing the value. And, and well, well, I shouldn't use back that word, but at least recognizing that the Jamaican language is something that they need to officially speak to they yeah. need to officially address right yeah. they need to they need to say something to the state that listen all our customers speak this language we as 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 actors in the jamaican economy right and as participants in the jamaican culture need to do something to ensure that when we communicate people understand yeah Right? No has but, been but, big. but but but, but they probably won't do it on their own will. They will need to be forced, right? And 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 so the 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 to the extent that we can apply commercial or economic pressure, right? To the extent that we can apply political pressure through some form of union or 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 whatever um collaborative efforts that we could do. As, as people who have an interest um, to, the, to the extent that we can make the argument that what these judges are doing or what these doctors are doing are harmful mm. to the health and Absolutely. are harmful to justice within the context of the Jamaican environment. I know some of that work has been done, what but I'm what I'm saying is that the, 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 the struggle needs to be broadened. Go ahead. But I say that flow has some um, yard on yard on road ads, which are very interesting. But um, I noticed that when the middle class person comes on, they're not really speaking Jamaican. It's a very stush brown lady who is advertising the middle class version of the ad. But maybe I'm being wicked to notice. All right. But it needs to be challenged, you know. Yes. But why she couldn't be talking Jamaican too? Um, you know, let me, let's say they'll say that is a realistic representation of the um, class language um, continuum. But Brian Johnson is asking a very good question in the chat. Why it take to make Patwa ascend in a Jamaica? Should there be a bill tabled in parliament or something? Who should do what? So, you know, we're talking about it, but how can we move the thing forward? And um, somebody else is asking Talawa Adodo. I think that's right. Me want to ask the panel, anybody I try to link up with African people who are doing creative work in a dem language, um, you know? And Clive Robinson, this is a very, very serious question. How can we encourage, not to say the others not serious, you know, what I mean is, this is one that I, I, I understand and I feel strongly about. How can we encourage more folks to start publishing exclusively in Jamaican Creole? I think some want to attempt it, but feel that no publisher might want to take them on. So when we're talking about the creative industries I'm publishing now, um, which publisher is prepared to do that? Um, when um, people complain about my columns in Jamaica, one of the things I post sometimes is, look how much other things in other Guinea I can't read. You know, to read a column, because, you know, they don't want to read it, but they want to stop other people from reading it who want to read it. They say, look, there's so much else. But you see, if a publisher now is going to publish only your work in Jamaican, it might create a problem in terms of considerations of the market. So I, I, I feel that that question is a, a very pertinent one because it 
as Kama was saying, we're looking at the value as the economic value. If a publisher feels that they're not going to make any money publishing your work in Jamaica, it's not going to happen. So it raises the whole question of self-publishing. Can people afford to self-publish? And Verma, I'd love to hear Absolutely. what you have to say. I just want to say that the very first collection that I had published was called Considering Woman, mm -hmm. 1989. They sent back the volume and said, um, did I want to, to let them have Joan Riley teach me how to write Jamaican language? What? What they meant by that? Anyway, the long and short of it is what they were telling me is that um, there were problems. And I said to myself, I'm glad that at that point I was already a professional lecturer. I wasn't waiting to make myself oh, it, by writing. Yes. So, so I, I wrote to them. So I gave the, uh, the book to a Canadian woman who happened to be visiting Reveal. And she read it off in one night. And it's only one sentence in that book that she had a slight problem with. So I wrote them back and I told them that. And I also said, if you won't publish it with this, then we can stop talking. What I'm prepared to do is to write an explanation of the relationship between the two languages. And it was called afterward. I say this, that when that was republished in 20. 14, they, the afterward was there. And a, 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 a European lecturer in Caribbean literature reviewed it and said, they need not have published the afterward because enough people are now aware of Jamaican Creole. Now, I don't know if she's right. How many after, years difference was that? Between 1989 and 2014. It's a long yeah. time. Yes. And, and really, and truly, the, 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 the literary people are teaching a lot of our works in the schools. So in the, in the universities, at least. So Abroad. In that sense, she's right. But I think here, too, I mean, I don't think that we are not using Caribbean literature in the schools here. We are. I, I'm just oh, and I, you I, know I that literature. You know that literature is not compulsory. I know and I'm history, about and that, but that's a whole not compulsory. I've, I've already spent a lot of emotional energy on anger and anger and that one. But I wanted to say too that so what, what I'm saying is yes, the literature might be there, but it's not necessarily being taught if it is not being required. So it's being taught a relative a small group of students, those who choose to do literature or those who choose to do history. But sorry. No, no, I, I was also saying that the business about not being able to understand what is written in part or in the I always show people, most of Olive Senior's Summer Lightning, a lot of it, most of those stories are written in part because she's using the voice of children. And it got this first Commonwealth Prize. And up to today, if you analyze it, you will see that if you read it, it's, it's part of but, well, don't let me go into that. The point is that it, it is so written that anybody can understand it. I have not heard people complaining. And I'm saying that one of the things, I only mentioned my example to say that sometimes if you put your foot down, they will step back. Yes. So or we have, have to... to so we have to recognize that the publishers have power, but the author has power too. So if they want to publish your work, they will have to back off. But it also means that we need to establish at least even one publishing house in Jamaica that will be committed to publishing material in the language. To go back to the point that was made earlier by Nikisha, that I think it was Nikisha that if we want to, or was it Hubert, that if we want to teach the language in schools, we need more material. Was it Hubert? Can't remember. Hubert, was it you who made that point? That was Prof. Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. Sorry. Um. So that we need more material, and if we get a publishing house that's committed to producing mm -hmm. that material, that would be a major contribution to developing literacy in the language. You wanted to say something, now, Nikisha? 
Well, um, just to wrap up a little um, and to add to some of what was said before, because, you know, I had a mouthful earlier. <laughs> um, you know, in terms of creating in the language, um, when we had the pandemic, um, I bought some masks and on my mask was the words, Tanaya Yad. Yes. And wherever I went in the world, right after, you know, the place, countries began to reopen, people would approach me. What's written on your mask? Whether I'm in the Caribbean, other territories in the Caribbean, or if I'm in America, what's on your mask? And I find that they found it so interesting because they've never seen like Pata written like that. Mm -hmm. or they, they didn't know what language it was. And I'm like, it's it's Tanaya Yad, which means stay home. Was it in Cassidy or? It or, was in Cassidy. It was in good. Cassidy. Yes. Because a, a friend of mine, his parents actually made the mask and I told them what to put on it yes. in Cassidy, right? And, uh, you know, we need to start producing more. There are some billboards. We need more billboards and, and, and signs and traffic signs in Jamaica, I think. Because, you know, I like when I'm driving in Jamaica, when I visit home and I see things like, no, dotty up Jamaica, mm -hmm. Right. It shows that, you know, we are embracing the language more and we, we are producing in the language. Um, in terms of somebody, I don't know if you've been, well, you're busy hosting, but I, I've been switching to the YouTube um, channel and I see where people are talking about creating cartoons in mm -hmm. Jamaica, right? So as I mentioned before, with Digicel, with Ruby, you know, let's have apps in Jamaican Creole, Creole that we can actually talk to and you know give us responses in our own language and help us in our own language um and i'm just I'm, i've made notes here based on what people have said we are, we already have the news in patwa but this is on youtube why can't we have a segment in the week on tvj or cvm where you know um we we recap the news in our language in yes. yes. right um why is it Yes, we're happy about the internet that people can go there and access it via Broadcast Jamaica or the Jamaican Language Unit. Um, another case, immigration officers. I remember going through JFK, uh, I believe it was JetBlue Airlines, and the immigration officer he opened my passport and him said, oh yeah, Jamaican, this was a Guyanese. And he said, you know, I said the Jamaican never work with JetBlue, get more money because they speak a foreign language. And we said, really? He said, yeah, because them talk part when they can help with immigration matters. So he said that they had a case where a Jamaican came through and they were asking him as the guy needs to help. And he said, no, because I'm not pay my feet and I'm not talk Jamaican Creole. Right? <laughs> and yes, it's interesting. So right now I'm involved in a program um, through the exposure of Haitian Creole to help with the Haiti situation with, with, along with the University of Guyana, we're creating a course that will help with the Guyanese police force and the, um, I believe it's the foreign affairs ministry there, um, to deliver this course remotely to help their workers, their government workers, to help to communicate with these Haitians who are coming in, right? So in the same way, I want our immigration officers you know yeah we have jamaican immigration officers but sometimes we have our personnel that work with different airlines right how capable are they to help with translation are we pushing this um kamal spoke about courses only the university of the west indies mona has a course in jamaican creole there are three landed campuses there's an open campus right there is a market for it the musicians want to learn the language in Europe and Asia. I've come across this. I've had in my time years ago having to teach producers from Spain, from Madrid, Spain, Jamaican Creole, right? Because they were producing songs. They were producing songs in the language and needed to understand what it is that we were saying. And they were just so intrigued. We can develop a course, an international course, like to... Um, to teach musicians, foreign musicians, not just our local people, we already know the language, but how can we gain from it? Can we develop an, a course for the international community, right? Since the pandemic, online thing, big no, we can deliver online and reach the, the masses, right? People who are interested will sign up and will pay to learn the language because they're producing music, reggae music and dancehall music in Europe and all these different places in the world. Right. 
And Professor Devanish is good at creating these courses because he's the one who actually created the outline for the one that we're going to use for the Haitian Creole course, right? Um, so even back to the court situation, Carolyn, I think for some people in the legal system, they benefit from not having the language to help certain cases. I don't know if you remember the Tivoli inquiry where mm -hmm. some of the witnesses went up and I, I remember two cases, um, a man, he was talking to the lawyer and, you know, him said, the rubble them when I reach when I back my book up and I rubble them. And then the lawyer said, yes, yes. And they had guns, right? And the man said, we are talking about, sir. He was, he said, the rebel them in part of a rebel. But what he meant was rubble, waste, mm. garbage. And the lawyer ran with that to say he's referring to rebels with guns, right? And I was looking at the misinterpretation, the miscommunication during that, <laughs> those, those, um, the inquiry and another section, the lawyer questioning the man and him said, the soldier draped me and took me on my face and bust up my face. And, and the lawyer said, so your face was bleeding. And the, the witness said, then bust up, I mean, bleed, ma'am. So we're seeing where these speakers, they felt that they weren't being heard or they were being mis, um, misunderstood. Because disregarded, were, disregarded. Or, and you know, and that falls under linguistic di discrimination. We need to eliminate linguistic discrimination in the court system. We need to provide more help for a person. We need to more trained personnel in the legal system, right? So, um, in a way, you know, I want as come out said, what can digital do? What can flow do? You know, with technology, are we creating? Are we assisting people? with the apps or technology using the language. Let's see how we can do that. Join with the Jamaican Language Unit at the University of the West Indies and see how you can come up with a solution to put more value in the language. You know, it's not, it's about identity. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. about nationhood, <laughs> right? And it's a unique part of our people. And right now you have a surgeon, Dr. Shar um, Garth, Shaka Paul McDonald, who's going in the schools in um, doing something called the Fully Bright Tour. And he's using dance on music as a tool to reach the students. Nettle and Romain says the um, vitality of a language exists in the veins of its youngest generation. These children, they are our future. We yes. need them to see the value in the language so that they who are going to become the next surgeons can use patwa and explain to the patient your eel back, your head back, your, <laughs> you know, your fingertip, these things like your toes, you know, Jamaican, every part of your foot, your foot, right? Your foot, your, your foot, your, your doctor have to say you have a point, point where? Oh, good, good, good. The power, the power take over. Exactly, right. So we need these children, and I think he's doing a good job in terms of using the language through the music to educate these students and to help them right using the language uh, because these these children are the future right mm -hmm. and if now going to school i talk about i use english and i pretty up the thing yes we we use english they can both function you know a slice of the pie for patois a slice of the pie for english right it, it, they coexist already we just need it to be done officially very good. Thank you, Nikisha. There's a very good question here from Renee Robinson. I think do other countries around the world have patois through Creole exams, like how in Jamaica at the CSEC level, students are learning French or Spanish here and have to do an exam. I know for a fact that many universities in the US allow students to show competence in Jamaican to um, meet the requirements of their foreign language. So um, yes, they do have students, maybe not at the um, CSEC level, but certainly at university graduate level, Jamaican is seen as one of the languages. Dr. Pollard, I think you had that experience at Columbia, didn't you, that you were able to use Jamaican as your foreign language? Am I yes, remember yes, correctly? Yeah, but, and, that's, and that's so long ago. Yeah, You just need to identify that you have a foreign language, whatever. Yes, yes. And I, I, well, I was in a good place because a lot of linguistics was involved in the course I was doing. Yes. Teaching of English speakers of other languages. And so, so they I, recognized. Yeah, I, it, I really didn't have a difficulty getting that done. 
at that point in that place. Excellent. And it was at Columbia, wasn't it? Columbia Teachers College. Yes, very good, very good. So there's a precedent. And that was about what year? 1972, 71. Exactly. So, you know, you see the problem is that people in Jamaica don't know this because they get the derision. Um, just this week, Sunday, somebody posted in response to my column in Jamaica. So did she do her PhD thesis in Jamaica? You know, and you know, they know that I don't do a PhD thesis in Jamaica and this is quite irrelevant. But the point is what they're saying is, um, you know, you're advocating a language that is not good enough for a PhD to write up your PhD in, but they don't seem to realize that people are writing PhDs on the language, which is, you know, a step closer to where we want to go, that is to recognize the value of the language, not just for entertainment, which is the issue I have with thinking of it as a creative and cultural industries, but thinking of it as a language of analysis, a language of philosophy, as Miss Lou says, you know, Jamaica, would you write that, she, that, that dramatic monologue, Jamaica philosophy, where she's saying that, you know, the proverbs have all of this philosophy in it. And um, much is saying, oh, you could use a distant word like philosophy with the, the old bad talking Jama languages, Jama language. And when Miss Lou explains the philosophy embedded in the proverbs, and you have written about that too, Velma, haven't you? Yes, but I want, I just wanted not to forget this, this thought. There is a collection by Kai Miller yes. called something like In These Bushes. Something in, in, it's a phrase that we hear all the time in cases like something happened. I'm sorry, I, I just can't remember. It's something in, right, man. in the bushes. And I was writing a paper and I had a very short space in which to explain the difference, one of the differences between Jamaican or, or the Creoles and the European languages is the notion of the abstract and the concrete. Yes. And it was made so easy. I just went into Camilla and he had things like, um, so, go a bush. Mm -hmm. Or you may say, and he just put it into English, whatever. Yes. I mean, he's, he's had strong in his cheek, but, the, yes. but it did it for me. I could just copy, you know, quote those sentences where he had to show, which was showing that the same thing is being said, but the yes. business of the difference between the concrete and the abstract yes. is such yes. an important idiomatic concept. Yes. But it was so easily expressed the way he did it. You know? Yes, Godeda Bush is the equivalent of dying outside of community, but Godeda Bush is so much more vivid. Than All of that. I mean, as I said, it was in a, in a, in a poetry yes. collection. Yes. yes. So, but the selections are absolutely on point. Well, let me tell you, the time running, you know, is 6.42. Um, um, before I ask the panelists to give their closing comments, I just want to see if there's anything in the, in the chat. I see four new messages. Um, oh, Harvard has a Jamaican Creole course. Nikisha is pointing out York University in Canada has a Creole course too. Um, Somebody asking, should we be afraid of losing our language, having it taken over by another? I don't know who wants to answer that. I just that. want to say very quickly that certainly some year like 1968 or 1970, an international linguist had written that things like Jamaica Creole would disappear yes. uh, as people got more education. Well, he's dead now. And the thing is that Jamaican Creole cannot disappear as long as people are speaking. 70% of the people speak only that, perhaps. So the notion, I mean, there, there are some cases of language death. In this, but Jamaican Creole is not going to be one. You know? no. So please don't be afraid. It cannot die. Yeah. And you see, even the people who learn English, the ones that are honest, know that there's a whole world of feeling and history and identity that is expressed in Jamaican. So as they can't, if they're going to reject it, they're killing a part of themselves. They know that, you know? And so even though they are competent in English, it doesn't mean that they have to choose between English and Jamaican. You think of a play like Old Story Time, you know, which was such a powerful statement about 
upward social mobility and rejecting blackness and rejecting black culture. And in the end, you know, you realize that you have to come to terms with who you are. You can't, you can't pretend not to be who you are. You can go on for a long time, but you know, my grandmother was a very stush lady and she was only always scoops and scoops in, in English. And I'm telling you, she got ill and was on delirious. And I heard some breeder patwa from my granny in her delirium that I'd never heard when she was in her quote unquote right mind, when she went into this state of, you know, everything that she was came out in the language, but she was very proper in English most of the time. And I'm saying, boy, you know, it's sad that we have to make sickness bring that out in us. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Any other comments? 645. Um, let me see if there's anything. Nikisha, you say you're watching the YouTube chat. Is there anything there that's yeah. different than the, from what the, I'm seeing? What Please you had me. said, what you had said about um somebody saying, aren't we worried about losing the language to somebody? Yes. Listen, man. Yeah. Answer that with a proverb, a Jamaican proverb. What well, fear can be and fear. Yeah. <laughs> fear with language, I feel with language, right? And it's already established in history that Jamaican Creole is spoken by Jamaica. It's, it's unique to Jamaicans, right? Even if you learn it as a second or a third language, a Jamaican patwa, it, the, the name is in there. It's fairy language, right? So we can't lose it. And we don't mind acculturation. We don't mind people wanting to learn our language and our culture. We welcome it. Boy, I hope it's not flow you depon because it's flow. Which digit which server are you using because it well bad my child? No, you mean like with my camera, something happened with my laptop. That's the why camera, my camera is the camera yeah. or you okay the camera on my device. So it's service. not my server. I, it's not my server. I, I mean I work for them, but I am with the bigger better network. <laughs> <laughs> well, I may mean, have the two of them because me got flow messed me up one time. I was on a panel and no service. So I mean, now I have flow and Digicel um, internet because they say when one pop down, we will have the other. I mean, uh, how we now hear nothing from you? You there? I am gone. No, it, man. I can't, I can't, I can't go on. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm very happy that we did not talk about what we were instructed to talk about in the title <laughs> of this um, of this roundtable discussion, which is the impact of the language or the value of the language to the cultural and creative industries. We talk about it, well, but we never talk. Maybe we never talk about it as much as we should should have did do. It is clear to me that our creatives, particularly in the music industry, don't need nobody permission don't need no policy, don't need nothing to create and perform and deliver in their language. I think that the one of the important takeaways for me that, that we should extend the discussion into other arenas is the value of the language in terms of the regard in which it is held or should be held or that we should agitate for it to be held. The value of the, of the language in the liberation of the mind. Absolutely. Particularly when we talk about what materials are available to our children or what punishments or reward they may attract for using or not using the language, that we're really talking about the decolonization of education. Absolutely. Not just in structure and content, but in the methodology and the words and the vocabulary through which that content um, is delivered. We really are talking about something which sustains us. And there is a way in which when we develop our self-confidence um, and, and, and value of the language, we will be powered and empowered to produce economic wealth. But if you're always a shame and you're being made to call up yourself and how your talk is not good enough and you can't read how you talk, then maybe you won't be motivated to produce for a structure which then turns around and underpays you anyway. Exactly. So, so, 
So I'm seeing this as a discussion about the value of how we speak in decolonization, emancipate yourself from mental slavery and what that can mean for economic well-being. Let me give you a good example, Amina. I was invited to be the public orator at the University of the West Indies. And in the letter that came, I was told, but of course, you know, you can't um, speak in Jamaica, you, you know, and then it was, it, it was almost as though this was like a little joke. Now, I'm going to say, if I'm going to write a citation for somebody like Miss Lou, you're going to tell me that me can't write in Jamaica? And it, the, 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 the thing that annoyed me was the assumption that I wouldn't know which language was so-called appropriate for use as public orator. In their minds, whoever now is going to ask me to be a public orator recognizes that me can do the work, but they're already setting to be embarrassed because them don't know if me going to get up because shame them and go use Jamaica. You understand? Well, there is the conundrum. This is because the we're, saying, we're saying that there are situations in yes. which our mother tongue it's is inappropriate. inappropriate. Yes. Well, in the end, me never bother take up the little work because I knew that it was a lot of work and I asked for a little release time from teaching to write the citations and them going and going like them things say, this is something we're going to write overnight and me just tell them goodbye. But the, I was annoyed at this idea that they're going to put in the letter that I cannot use Jamaica. You know, it, it's, it's mental slavery. You know, it is just terrible. In Jamaica, you are the public orator at a university in, the, in Jamaica and you cannot, there's no space in that in that performance for you to unfairity, use language. Unfairity to quote Absolutely, you. absolutely. I thought I would just throw Perhaps, that in. Uh, if so, I may. Turn on your camera, yes. camera. You're looking so handsome, in, especially now in the dark and your face just showing up beautiful with the dark background. So come on, make us see your face. Go ahead. What happened now? We're not hearing a thing. Okay. Um, it's a smiling face, but we're still not hearing anything. Not hearing at all. No, I'm hearing you. Okay, we're hearing okay. you now. So just to 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 jump on on the point, um, Amina made. You know the 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 the, the issue becomes. We know what we need to do. We we've discussed it. I think a lot. The issue becomes how do we get it done. Mm -hmm. Right, which which really comes back to one of the questions you read out. Um, I, I wanted to 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 speak to earlier, where one of the someone watching asked, "How do we pretty much get change?" Basically, right? Um, and it's it would seem to me that the, 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 there's no doubt in my mind that getting to the value. Right and extracting the value and extracting the value, we could say yes. I, I made it very clear that I'm talking about uh, economic terms, mm -hmm. but also just cultural terms and mm -hmm. and 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 the, on the question of identity. In term, yes, in the, on the question of identity as well. Right, it it is going to take political action. Mm -hmm. uh, it is going to take lobby. It is it is going to take all kinds of advocacy. And it means that those of us who share this concern must be prepared. And I emphasize must be prepared to use all sort of tools available at our disposal, which includes, you know, our going out there and, 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 and protesting, writing, if, if that's what it, what it means, forming our advocacy groups, right? I don't know how many advocacy groups exist now in the context of Jamaica for the Jamaican language. Um, you know, the, 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 I, I don't see it unconnected to the lobby, for example, for someone like Miss Lou to be a national hero, uh, Bob Marley to be a national hero because the issues are connected. We are what the, what what we are facing. It seems to me, in the context of Jamaica, comes right back to that class struggle, that 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 class point that you made, right? And it means that 
all the things that feed into this issue, right? Because they're extracting the value of the cultural and creative industries. As Amina pointed out, and I wouldn't disagree, can be a byproduct. I mean, we've centered it as a part of this discussion here, but the fact of the matter is it can be a byproduct of a bigger lobby that really deals now with the question of who we are as an identity, you know, our own identity as a people, right? And how we see ourselves, how we see the way we talk, right? How we see the way we look, the way we, 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 we hear, or the way we choose to where we hear are just to hear what God gave, right? All of these things are connected. And so to answer that question that that person asked, it to me is a question of forming groups that lobby to get change at the political level, right? And also at the economic level, right? The community level, wherever we are, we have to form, we have to think in terms of how are we going to bridge, make, make connections with other people who share similar interests mm -hmm. and will actually work towards the, you know, the ends that we seek, right? So, so the question of the Jamaican language is not disconnected from the, 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 the question of identity. Right and 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 our aesthetics. All right. So I, I, you know, that 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 is 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 the point I wanted to add. So I'm I I I see what I mean. I'm saying, and I I know I mean from from having been and worked in Jamaica at the policy level and uh, you know at, at the academia etc. I see that we have a fear, and I use it in quotes of a discussion around commercialization and culture. It's not something that we embrace readily, but I, I recognize it. It's, it's a powerful leverage in the overall fight that we have, the identity struggle, if, if, if I may use those, that term, uh, in the context of Jamaica and that, that, that emancipation of the self and emancipation of the mind, right? Um, and, and so we, we tend not to, be very aggressive as uh, in, 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 in dealing with those issues and that aspect of, of the struggle, but it is a critical aspect of the overall identity question, right? And the, the, the social question uh, that, that, that we have to deal with. And, and, and as creatives, if we continue, in my opinion, to avoid dealing with this aspect as well as the others, we are going to remain for a very long time in the position that we are now, where from you know, the 70s, 80s, whatever, we have been having the same discussions mm -hmm. and we're still not making the kind of progress we need to make. Yeah. All right, come on, that's your summary statement. I'm gonna ask Prof Devonish now because we're really on the edge here now, time to finish. Hubert, what, you, what is your final remarks? Are you oh, going to make chat GPT chat for you? Is a chat GPT <laughs> there? <laughs> no, right. But anyway, the, um, quickly, just to say that the point I was trying to make earlier on is that the um, that language is actually the lifeblood of the kind of artificial intelligence ages we are going into. And of course, it involves creativity and the production of, of okay. reading materials and all kinds of stuff, right? But that we have to have is back again to Kamau's point. It's about money. Because the control of the data and who has it is of great commercial value with the large language models. And, um, and therefore, we as people talking these languages have to have a position on the safeguarding of our essential intellectual property or productivity, you know, and, um, creativity, etc., to ensure that it benefits us and uh, at the same time it generates value, economic value for us. And the last quick point is that I think we are closer to policy shift than we think. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Good so news. I a, a lot of the details, but certainly we have a policy shift. The, the official policy 
of the uh, national standards curriculum is that the education system should be bilingual. We already we have had a policy shift since 2018. We've had no follow up on it. And this well. is the thing that we we have to figure out when the changes come, how we respond and what are the kinds of, of, of because the lobby has to be not simply in the form of getting an official change in policy, but trying to figure out and plan for implementation. the implementation. For implementation. And we so I'm saying that even though we have these discussions, I think for education. Oh, we are gonna do it. Oh, we are gonna do it. Exactly uh, what we are gonna do, right? And how we are gonna do it, where we get the money from, because the same people will say, yeah, all right, you have part one now, right? You have Jamaican and thing, but they're not paying no money uh, for you know put resources in place to let it happen. And you are left kind of with a thing, a situation where it can flop because you don't have no money. So you have to. Well, Hubert, how, yeah. You should make the people know that you're going to translate the whole of the primary school book them into Jamaican already. Yeah, you know. okay, but, yeah but that don't matter. We, remember, the member said you can't just translate um, school book. You have enough book for. Um, can we pick me read one book? That, that will catch you, you know. We translate one book for a term, but pick them need. Nothing literacy yeah. has to read all the time, all the time, all the time, right? And that means enough book of transit, enough money got to spend, or yeah. enough resources and things. So that's a way you now you use the artificial intelligence. You plan, you got to put things in place, and we can't wait for them people to do it. We got to do it yourself. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Nikisha, closing words. Well, I thought what I was saying earlier. Was it close? All right then, Velma. What are you? You see, you like to chat, and you go like in a wild chat. So you done, Velma. What are your closing words? My my closing words have come out of this panel. What has stayed with me, or will stay with me more critically, is the case of the medicine and the law. Yes, yes. And I do believe that we can put some pressure on doctors to make sure that at least the people they're talking to yes. know what they're to do with what yes. they're giving them, whether we have to insist that they have a patwa speaker in their in the yes. office somewhere. And if we do that, they will start speaking the patwa themselves because they don't want to hire somebody to pay to do it. <laughs> uh, in, the, in the law, we can put Somebody in there, the judge is not going to want to bend because she has her little axe to grind. But I do believe that those are so critical yes. that, uh, uh, that, that we need to really do something about that. And I, I, I weep for the medical one. Part yes, of it. absolutely. And even a simple thing like asking, so what the medicine to do? You know, the doctor prescribes and you don't know what the thing is up for. And then some of the pharmacists cannot even read the bad handwriting. This is another issue that I have with the doctors that they write illegibly and that writing illegibly is a power thing. Pharmacists have, I know that pharmacists have, have told me that they, you know, they've gotten prescriptions, they're not sure and they can't find the doctors and they kind of just have to guess what them think it is, you know? So we have to insist that the doctors write legibly. It, it is just a power trip at every level. Or we can insist that they type the thing and yes. send it by email to the pharmacist. They're not going to want you. So all I'm saying is that let us force them to put stuff in, put in, you know. Yes, take the power from them. That they, right. they, they, Their knowledge of medicine law is what we're paying for. It's not a power trip. You must be able to, when you leave the doctor, you should understand what the doctors are wrong with you. You should. That is at a very minimum. You know, you should understand. And the doctor himself is going to say, you know that the people them just say yes and them just say yes and them just say, and he know they don't know. So, so what to do? All right. Amina, was that your final say? You want to tell me like the Kisha, you'll give your final statement already. Do you never hear me say it is wrapped up in the um decolonization of the All mind? Right. Okay. And that the education system is critical to this. All right, Nikisha, you're getting a last chance to wrap up. All right, so <laughs> I'm agreeing with Amina. Um, we have to, you know, train our younger generation to appreciate the language. We need to sensitize some of our older generation because older people are resistant to change, you know, but yes. we, changing is, change is inevitable. 
we yes. can get it done. And as Prof said, we need money. We need enough, enough money for it. Because even when we translate the Bible in a part one, enough, enough money it takes. Yes. Right? Yes. And I don't know if you have a live chat when somebody asks if you do your PhD in a part one. Anybody know when the first PhD they write in English? Remember, English was not popular back in the day. Way back English, in the was day. A, English was a patwa. The Bible not even the writing a patwa. The New Testament never the writing a patwa, right? It's a in English, they write in English. I mean, in English, right? And when we translated it in patwa, we got a lot of, you know, fight about it. But the thing is, you know, if you know the history of languages, you would have something else to say and you would be proud to see your own tongue in the word of God. So, yeah. So yeah. it's just to embrace it. Identity is a huge part of the culture. It's a national identity. Embrace the language. I feel with language. I feel with tongue. You know, it's unique to us. So just embrace it and do everything you can with the language to preserve it, to preserve your identity as a people. Right. So film, music, we already have it in music, you know, poetry, you know, the apps. We're moving, we're in living in a technology savvy world. Let's put the language in our apps, right? Jamaica, it's a continuum, but we can be fully bilingual if we decide, if the government decides to work with us in this respect. Just think of all the jokes on the internet in Jamaica and all of the yeah. stuff that yeah. circulates mm -hmm. in Jamaica and on the internet good yeah. bad and indifferent well all right i do not believe on principle that any moderator of any session should try to give any summary of what the people them say because that people them don't say what them have to say and if you're not catching the people them did say you're done so i have no intention of summarizing all i want to do is to thank everybody for a very lively conversation hubert nikisha amina Kamau and Velma. I think everybody who is on will agree that this has been a most appropriate celebration of International Mother Language Day, International Muma Language Day, for your Muma language, for everybody all over the world who big up the language and then learn in them, start to learn in their Muma belly. Thank you very much, Vidaya. Walk good. And good up walk with you. Yes, Mrs. <laughs> 